Welcome back to the Talos of Tech Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by Randy and Nicholas today. How are and you, Jen? the Fine beautiful day. iMac, which should only be viewed from this direction. That's correct. Wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> wrong. Here's the deal, hey, this folks. Is, is this our last episode before Dub Dub? Yes. Mm, no, wait. I don't think so. I think we have no, another wait. week, don't no, we? Not. Yeah, we have another week. Oh, man, we shouldn't have talked. About, we should have talked about this before we started. Um, oh. So basically, if we decide to do another episode before Dub Dub, it will drop like hours the night before Dub Dub. Yes. Like so, do you want do you want this to be the last one, or do you want to do one on Monday? Let's do another right one on Monday. Monday. Let's get a pre Dub Dub show in. I'm I'm all for this. Yeah. Okay. So we figured it out live we'll, on the air. We won't talk Dub Dub today. Not Dub Dub hype on today's episode. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about Dub Dub. Just though, uh, you know. Okay. Next week's is just a hype podcast this is just somewhat of a normal podcast okay but guys so if, we're ta- if we're talking about a normal podcast i, I want to show you guys something i'll show you first show and then I'll, then I'll put it on here um 2020 randy tried to get something and didn't work uh how to return it the mac so, mini so 2021 randy <laughs> got it no not as his exciting. personality did he return his personality I got my watch <gasps> band back. Ooh, the colorful one. Oh, you got one. the pride band. Ooh, I got it. Fancy. Fancy, fancy, fancy. I Sweet. bought the, I bought the literal the last one. Was destroyed? No, thank God. <laughs> Good. I bought <laughs> genuinely, uh, at least out here, I bought the last one that they had in stock. Uh, mm, Sweet. Uh, for the 44. So I was nice. like, uh, my wife has it. So I wanted to be like her. And I was like, all right. Let's match, and I really, really, Aww. really like the 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 darker we're tents. Yeah, we're matching yeah. as we speak. She just just doing stuff. As you guys can see, audience, uh, this is my office or not space. See, Ta-da! If you're an audio bed. listener, yes. If <laughs> as you can see, I can't. Um, those are the <laughs> lights. People asked about cabbage. the lights. Yeah. So those are my trees, and uh, so I moved in. I'm just unpacking. This may not be the final for you guys to see or for this to be seen. Um, I got my. Uh, camera ready to go so next week pre-hype i will be ready and then when it comes to dub dub i will be completely locked in and we're gonna have one heck of a show um so i'm getting all the stuff you know set up so that's been my uh tech nightmare trying to reestablish things wow yeah just in time one week to go by the time people are yes hearing one it's almost like i go. planned this week or i planned i planned for the move and i planned for everything to just be right behind Dub dub so we or right before dub dub so we can really guys I'm so, I know we're not supposed to talk about it right now but I'm just I'm so excited I'm so hyped <laughs> I'm scared I'm worried about the iPad Pro. <laughs> are you worried about the iPad Pro Drew <laughs> yeah uh, I iPad OS needs to be the star of the show in my opinion mm. or M1X one of the one of the two but I have very little ideas or suggestions do you guys have big things on your list for ios mac os or watch os or tv os or of expectations yeah. oh dude like big feature requests or big wish I lists i really or... really want widgets to come to the ipad's home screen like that would just be a groundbreaking That's iPad OS. feature I, I was talking oh. everything else everything else <laughs> um no actually <laughs> to me it's like everything i want is ipad os related i have an and everything ipad else i can't if it comes to iOS, cool. But the thing that I would like to see on iPad OS to make it stand out more as a uh, in between a Mac and an iPhone is um, I want FaceTime to have screen sharing capabilities like Skype and screen recording. Yeah, mm-hmm. in a way, things that would like be that nice. uh, to to make it a more utility for uh, yeah. at home work and stuff like that. Stuff that we've been mm-hmm. doing since we started all this, but also for other people who are just had to do Zoom calls and stuff like that. If a- Apple already has a business relationship on the enterprise market with IBM and, and, and contracts with the government and things like that, uh, mm-hmm. to have them have their own first party uh, capabilities like this where they don't have to go outside and worry about uh, third party uh, servers getting involved, Apple can really promote screen sharing, recording, all that in a more secure way. And you know the whole Apple thing with it. I would like to see iPad get stuff like that because uh, mm-hmm. it makes it immediately stand out from from Mac and iPhone, and it's something mm. that's exclusive to iPad OS, right. which I'm excited mm. for. Or if that's if that would be the case, I would like to see something like that. I agree. I would iPad agree. OS 
needs the most amount of work out of everything. I don't have a bunch of things for Mac OS. Can you guys mm. think of any um, things you would like changed on your Mac, software related? Software related, uh, I I would be in support of uh, more of a I don't know colorful interface. I guess I kind of feel like with Big Sur they kind of just went back. Like I really loved the semi-transparent nature of some of the apps, like the calendar app or whatever. It kind of used to be like semi-transparent. It kind of went to this big mm. stark white thing. And I'm not saying we need to go back to transparency. I'm just saying add some color throughout the UI because it's all just kind of white and bland and neomorphic and it looks nice and it's you know. I don't I don't have any huge problems with Big Search. Just if anything, it feels a little just sterile. Um, if they could liven it up a little <laughs> bit with some fun like splashy colors, you know, like they love to do ugly color pink, folks. That is the ugliest color <laughs> pink chin. Um, yeah, I don't know. Really, nothing I, exciting. Mac Mac mm-hmm. OS Big Search's biggest crutch is the third party uh, adoption rate about software that used to work uh, on Catalina. Mm, and, right. And they can't do much about that, really. <laughs> yeah. So what I would like to see is I would just like to see the developers get their stuff over to M1, Big Sur, uh, compatible, compatible. I mean, my the ongoing joke is like my this this perfect paperweight now, Camlink, this thing, um, I would like this to work again, ideally. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't mean so don't stuff love like your $12 that. one that works perfectly? You mean the one that actually makes me freezes all the time? It works for video recording, but I can't stream on it. It freezes. What? I think you need a new one. We talked one, about then. this. Okay. Well, all right. They're twelve dollars. But uh, that's Dang all. M one. Yeah. It, I don't know. I think uh, if if I know where you're going at, Nick. I I I like the idea of what's it called? Neomorphism. New it's neomorphism. It's neomorphism right now. Neomorphism. It's like neomorphism. I, is, is minimal the, aluminialism. Yeah. yeah. It's neomorphic. I want to see that yeah. get pushed, like, mm-hmm. but in a more vi- if, if 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 they're gonna if they're gonna be very colorful. If we're going back to 1997 with hardware, uh, then let's let's make the software be just this poppy and this that and the mm-hmm. other uh, for for uh, Mac OS, and let's just go all retro about it. And with the with the new IMAX, you can set your ship, accent color. Have you tried that? Yeah, I know. So I, I I was about to bring that accent color up on the new IMAX. Yeah. Um, I didn't mind it at all. Uh, I have turned it off because I can't stand to have links not blue and like my hi- highlighter not blue. I don't mind everything else kind of being color matched to the chin, even though I hate that color yeah. of pink. It's kind of a nice idea to think like the whole basically the whole system can be color matched um, with mm-hmm. like everything but what i did what i do still want is like my highlighter to be blue my little selector thingy and then like links still need to be blue i just could not get over the idea of having like peach colored links and highlighter selector just looked really weird to me so i changed it back to blue but i'm sure if you got the blue imac it looks great (laughs) how do you guys like your 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 max how's how they coming along what do you guys think of your uh m1 imax um, are we gonna go ahead, Nick? Okay, good. I was gonna. <laughs> are we bracing for yeah. an, an Apple Sheep rant, or like, can I talk? Or what, what we all do? know how I feel. Yeah, we <laughs> we all know how you feel. So, um, <laughs> what's up, guys? I've been using an iMac for a couple of weeks now, and I have some thoughts. Sam, um, <laughs> Sam, hey, Mark, what is up, long? guys? Hey, what's <laughs> up, good? Ooh, you got that. Mm. Perfect. Half the tech community impression. <laughs> every single, <laughs> every single. I'm gonna do an apple sheep uh, impression. You ready, guys? The chin is so terrible. Anyway, um, that impression was terrible. It really was. Ah! <laughs> Most things in my life are terrible. Uh, honestly, um, I'm not keeping it. I don't think at this oh. point. <laughs> it got dark really fast. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? You, you got, you went so you dark. You just sounded so sad and depressed all of a sudden. You went. And most of my just, life is terrible. Like, my life is terrible. Yeah, he, go, he goes. So that I'm, impression is terrible. Yeah, my whole life is okay, terrible. I see why that was funny now. Um, <laughs> Everyone just. Oh, no, my life is yo, amazing, what, guys. Today I'm in so the comments, yo, be... what's up with Nick? He's not acting the same. He's not. He's sad. Oh. <laughs> uh, are you keeping your iMac? No, no. I at this point <gasps> I can confidently say I'm not keeping <gasps> it. I was excited to keep what it. What happened? Um, what happened? It's really the pink chin. Honestly, it all boils down to the pink chin. 
because I love everything else about this computer, and it's the pink chimp. I, I don't mind We're best friends. That. Okay, well, no, hold, on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. So the orange, this orange color, I'll move it in frame so I don't have to do this in post. This orange color, best color ever. This is the color computer I want everywhere. It's just this beautiful deep orange wow. that's just like, mm. And it's like a beautiful display that I can have on my desk and then the ethernet's running through the through the power. So it's just the keyboard, the mouse, and the d whole computer. Very clean. And it's just a minimal desk setup. It's beautiful. Um, but then you get around to the mm -hmm. front and uh, as a photographer who edits in uh, a color balanced room, so my <laughs> my my lights here are all at 55k. So uh, it is it is perfect lighting for these gray, not white, gray bezels. They are very light gray. You need stacks too. Um, oh, I do need to use stacks at the moment. I've been messing around with like moving files to and from my NAS. So it's kind of a mess at the moment. Don't don't pay attention to this. I, I feel so <laughs> intimate with you right now. You're showing your desktop. Oh, uh, <laughs> should I not show my desktop? He turned, I turned on stacks like four years ago, and I've never turned it off, so I'm afraid to turn it off and see <laughs> all the, it'll just <laughs> everywhere, every file. Yeah, sometimes I'll use stacks when it gets unbarreled, but I need to clean up my computer. But basically, I've been moving stuff between my mm. NAS and stuff. But anyway, so you get to the front. Sure. Okay. I do not mind the white bezels. They're completely fine. I like them because I edit in a color-balanced room, and it's Where kind of Where nice. did your eyeballs go, Drew? Where'd you go? <laughs> Drew, you where are your man? eyeballs? <laughs> All right, and you were saying, Nick? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I find that the uh, white bezels helps me find white points a little bit easier uh, when I'm editing pictures. Uh, it helps me keep them nice and contrasty and bright as opposed to getting them kind of lost in the darkness because I have cool. definitely experienced times where I've edited pictures, whether it's on my iPad or on my 12-inch MacBook or other dark, dark bezeled monitors cool. where I kind of just get them too dark and then I put them on my phone yeah. or I post on Instagram I'm like oh wow that's like really dark you know and then I go back and lighten it up it's all about seeing it in context and so I really have enjoyed having the white bezels in my color balance room I think if I had a different color balance I probably wouldn't be a fan of it um, because you know it if you have daylight or whatever oh, like if you had blue with some orange <laughs> With some, oh uh, yeah, I'd be. If you had nebula lighting, like ninety nine percent of rooms. If you had nebula lighting, it would not be good. But for me, I do not mind the white bezels, and I'm not hating on anyone who doesn't like them because they are definitely super niche, and I just like them specifically because of this. What I will say, two bad things about this computer: that black line is atrocious. Um, I was really rooting for Apple to have them figure out some way to make the bezel a little bit longer and cover up a couple layers of pixels or make the display just go yeah, a little bit under. Like, that would have been nice. It's just like you could have done it, I think, right? Like, I don't care if I'm missing out on two pixels on each side. Just like it's that, that black line is pretty, pretty noticeable. And I was, as I said before it delivered, I was really hoping that it wasn't going to be as bad as it could have been and it's as bad as it could have been um so that's annoying it's as bad as it could have been. and then the chin the chin is primarily my issue i don't mind the size i don't mind it being there i don't mind its uh material i don't mind anything what i do mind is it's like literally pink so on the back we got like the orange color <laughs> it's it's literally pink it, wow that is so weird we got like a Drew center stage thing is like moving all over the place and like it's messing da, da, me up. Da, 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 da. It just punches <laughs> I was in like, on if him. Nick's gonna have his. I'm gonna have yeah, mine. Just we can we can right we can all have ours. Here. Um, Randy Randy just holds his phone. That's <laughs> perfectly fine. But this orange, That's I a love much the orange product. Orange color, perfect. The stand is like two shades lighter of orange, but still like kind of in the same mm -hmm. sphere. The keyboard uh, also has about that same color orange. It's kind of like a kind of a more like a rose gold pinky color orange, which is not my favorite, but I'll I'll, I'll live with this accent yeah. orange. Um, but the problem is the pink bezel an iMac. is like three shades lighter than the pink aluminum, which is already like two shades lighter mm. than the orange that I like. And so this this pink chin, it, every single person I've showed it to in real life, they're like, "Why did you get a pink computer?" And I'm like. It's because orange. I'm and you talk, because I'm secure with my sexuality, that's why. <laughs> well, this is true. I'm so secure. <laughs> I think you could have a uh, very good gender reveal party with oh. you. I'm about to. <laughs> this is this is how Drew's going to reveal the gender of his children. You open you you have like a silver iMac box, Ooh. but you put either an orange or a blue iMac inside it, and. 
<laughs> if anybody in the tech community is having a baby and they want to do a gender reveal, that's how they should do it. Is like peel the chin off and be like, oh, it's blue, it's a boy. <laughs> baby, let's get pregnant. <laughs> they pull it out and it's green. And it's they're like, try something. what? This baby gets to choose for itself. <laughs> We're not gonna. It's a green iMac. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's just oh, a silver yeah. one. It's yellow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, he froze. Did he bug out? He nope. Bugged out. I can see. I can see everybody. So I, I, I really, can see I really you. love uh, everything about the iMac except for that dumb chin, uh, which is just the wrong color. And I've seen the D brand stuff. I know Linus got like that uh, Damascus steel D brand thing, but I just cannot stand the sticker. To glass look like that's not a solution it, it looks so janky and i'm not good at stickers so i'd probably mess it up yeah it would be not flush too it would be thicker yeah the sticker True. would rise up above the glass gloss and it would just the look tacky sticker. to me the sticker would be thicker <laughs> also the the chin thicker sticker glass you can see from the side angle yeah i have a very intimate view you of your see... abu no yeah, no no put it back to how you were an exclamation mark randy so were you <laughs> i didn't hear you but We're all back now. Oh, weird. Okay. Well, yeah, The, the I did not anticipate the chin to be glossy. Really? And you didn't? Oh, I, I knew it was a piece of glass. I thought it was going to look like every other chin. I couldn't tell oh, from the unveiling. I just always but, assumed it was going to be glass, because I thought most of the chins were. No, iMacs have always had aluminum, uh, aluminum chins since okay. 20... 10, I think, or a long, long time. Basically, every iMac I've ever used, other than the first one. But that was when the bezel and the chin were all one. They were all one shade, which I honestly think almost looks a little better uh, to have like the two tone. But back then, there wasn't really like chinless design, so I wasn't, you know, I wasn't expecting mm -hmm. it to be chinless. But um, how was the performance compared to your Mac when Mini? You yeah, so this is this is probably the better question here because I did get a spec bump model here. What? It Randy breaking into song. Glass. In this is not a musical, Randy. Stop with the musical numbers. <laughs> He's doing a, new a thing. IMAC. It'll come in glass. <laughs> That's all how I know it's going to come in glass. computers shatter as he hits that high C. Um. <laughs> <laughs> glass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the performance is actually pretty good. Um, so I got the 16 gigs of RAM and a terabyte of SSD. I've been using base model Mac minis okay. before. Um, so honestly, the M1 Mac mini was perfectly fine for most of my needs. Uh, there were a couple occasions, though, when I had multiple 4K Final Cut projects open, exporting, importing, rendering, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, doing uploads and downloads via different browsers and stuff where I had hit that you're out of RAM thing. But... Honestly, I don't do that more than maybe once a month, like just have that intensive a moment of work. Normally, I'm not under a ton of pressure. You know, normally I can be like, okay, we're going to work on this thing, and then we're going to work on this thing. That was during the, con the reconstruction of the G Cube yeah, thing, that was, so that that's was, why you were panicking. And, that was one of them yeah. when I was working on the G4 Cube video, when I had like uh, 200 gigabytes worth of 4K footage that I was in, had in a project, and it was, you know, stressful. Yeah. So I haven't, I haven't noticed any problems with this and i have put this computer through paces similar to that so i think the 16 gigs of ram definitely helps any future mac that i get is definitely going to at least have 16 gigs of ram but it's no need no no okay. reason for me to upgrade current uh mac mini or cube uh stuff yes sir mr randy uh oh sorry sorry uh the, the cute me. little oh, urchin yeah. in the front row yes <laughs> me hi hi i'm the cute one me <laughs> all right <laughs> i have questions Randy's the for cute you one. I hey, I resent that. <laughs> Drew could be cute. <laughs> Drew sometimes cute, cute with on. his little ginger charm. Yeah, you're cute too. Raw cute. Brittany We're also a little cute. gay, but you know, it's fine. Yeah, you are cute. <laughs> I mean, okay. you are wearing a pride so, band, so I am way, none of us are cute. What? Ah, uh, well, you know. I love that band. I'm just so Beautiful. happy. If we're all cute, no one's cute. <gasps> Ooh. Ouch. So, Mr. Ann Sweeney. You alluded to something, and I don't know if what the end result has been. Are you swapping out the iMac for a different colored one then if pink is the only setback? Ooh, do tell. So for me, it's all coming down to the M1X chip and a 16-inch MacBook Pro. I think I've said for a little while I'm ah. sick of being stuck at my desk. Um, there are more interesting pieces of content, which I actually haven't even shared with you guys, that will require more portable stuff. 
Um, so I definitely need oh. a better laptop, probably in the nearer term future. An exclusive, um, might we say? No, it's, it can't be talked about publicly yet. It'll it'll happen when it happens. Uh, but uh, yeah, the desktop. Such a the, YouTuber NDAs. now. I know. I, I literally have two NDAs that I have yet to sign. So you know, he I'm is signing the them with myself. Disclosure agreement. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a YouTuber now. Oh, yeah. look at me. Uh, I'm an anyway. influencer on Instagram. I can't talk about the drones I'm flying. 150 followers. Go follow me on Instagram at Nick Answeeney. Yeah, um, mm. yeah so, I, so I'm you, really looking forward to the 16-inch MacBook Pro. And I think, I, I think, I'm fairly certain, actually, that I'm going to spec this out fairly well to the 16-inch MacBook Pro. So, um Obviously, if I were to get, if I were to keep this until the 16-inch MacBook Pro, it would be nice to have. You know, it's a beautiful design, beautiful display, whatever. But I really already have a very capable computer that does everything that I actually need. So I'm going to be fiscally oh. responsible and not eat the depreciation on a new Mac. Which, by the way, I'm not sure who would buy a pink computer. But if they want an orange-pink computer combo, um, hit Drew me up. Would. I guess. Yeah, that Ooh. orange, <laughs> that orange iMac will match his hair. He'll like it. I'm... <laughs> Yes. This thing's going back. Okay, Drew, I got questions. I got questions for you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it negatively, so can you – no, I'm just kidding. Tell me what (laughs) – after after using it for as long as you have now, what are the – what surprised you? Not so much benefits. For better or for worse, what are things that you went, ah, okay, like that moment where you go, hmm, okay, that you had to be hands-on with. What's changed your mind for better or for worse using the iMac now? Hmm. What's changed? Well, for better, for worse, you did say for worse. I can go into that. <laughs> yes, you can. Um, I thought that the fans would make a bigger difference. You got the base model, right? That was. Uh, that only has one fan, right? No, I got the four port. Oh, you got the four, four port. port. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's the eight core GPU and everything. <laughs> it's not the sixteen gigs of RAM, but I've never, yeah. I've never had that RAM thing pop up. Um, that's never been an issue but to be fair my iMac Pro has 32 gigs so that's probably why but uh when I did the M1 MacBook Air it never had RAM Mm pop-ups either but uh, when I did an export test compared to the M1 MacBook Air and my iMac Pro the M1 was slower and I was like okay that's fine it's a fanless laptop but there was part of my head leading up to this iMac review and leading up to this uh next uh what's it called generation of m1 now that this is the first machine that has two fans uh with the m1 mac mini i believe only has one as does the macbook pro there's just one Mm -hmm. and i was like what if maybe when i get the imac the two fans allow them to run the m1 at a higher clock speed and the reason that macbook air was slower was just because it couldn't cool down and with that improved thermal architecture maybe the m1 could outperform my imac pro so that was a concern of mine because you know I don't like the design, and I was like, I'm going to be really annoyed if I get this Mac and I find out that it's faster than my iMac Pro, but I have to put up with the bezels and stuff. So then I did the export test, and it was not... um, I did not notice a difference between the M1 Mm. MacBook Air and this. It it felt... um, It was a slightly different test. On the iMac Pro versus MacBook Air, I did a five-minute 4K at 60 file, same export settings and same video file and everything. And the MacBook Air took two and a half minutes longer. So a bit behind the iMac Pro, but not by much. And I was like, this was a thousand bucks. This is amazing. Like credit where credit is due. This is like amazing performance for a fanless design. And now I got a fan design and a desktop with no battery. And I'm like, okay, now we can see how good the M1 can actually get when it's cooled, when there's no battery life to worry about, and you can get as hot as you want. Let's see how fast it is. And this test between the iMac Pro and the 24-inch iMac was 10 minutes because I wanted it to be a tad longer just so we could see if the higher clock speed for extended period of time would help with the fans. For one, I didn't hear the fans like at all, Mm. even though it took about 30 minutes to export. And it also took uh, almost seven minutes longer than the iMac Pro, despite being twice the length. Hmm. So I was like... Ratio wise, it's actually more behind the iMac Pro than the MacBook Air was. Yeah. Now I'm sure the MacBook Air probably would have taken longer if it was a 10 minute file. Maybe would have slowed down due to the heat limitations. But I was very confused. It just overall made me wonder why did they put fans in this thing? I'm guessing it's just because of the display being hot. The 4K panel gets hot sometimes, and the fans are there for the screen. But 
I kept saying in countless videos and in tweets and stuff, I was like, if it's meant for like everyday consumers and it's not supposed to be like the pro grade, professional grade iMac, why does it need fans? You know, like mm -hmm. we know the M1 can work without fans on both the iPad, which has mini LED, and we know it works on the MacBook Air, which has a battery and is very thin and light, no fans, and it still runs really fast. And after reviewing it, I'm still confused. I'm still like, so why? There must be a monitor thing I don't know about. The, <laughs> that 4K panel is just way hotter than I think um, on the inside, <laughs> and that's what the fans are for. Because I was, oh. I was expecting a bigger boost in performance. So it seems to me uh, the, the real takeaway and the winner here is the, uh, the new Apple Siri remote. <laughs> yes i love that siri remote it's wonderful i think i hope they never change it other than like give it type c or something the slightly different charge method i wouldn't mind because i don't care for lightning but seriously i i've been using it every night i love the trackpad i love the buttons how clicky they are they're way more satisfying to click than the old remote the d siri button's in a great spot i can still click on youtube videos and skip 10 seconds at a time instead of the old remote where you had to like yeah. know exactly how to click it and there's a mute button there's a power button and i got it all set up so that it can turn my tv on like oh it's marvelous. I, I love it. I love that remote because they listened. And are you keeping this, it? I mean, that I can't. I can't decide. Ooh. It's it's hard to justify because it was a hundred and ninety dollars mm. that whole setup oh. yeah. after tax. <gasps> and my old remote sucks. I mean, it doesn't suck. It's it works. It gets the job done. There wasn't really anything inherently wrong with it. I liked having one remote that could turn the TV on and off. I can mute. I can change volume. And the old remote does all that, just more plasticky and less Apple-esque, less fluid. And basically, I'm asking myself if I can justify $190 on a remote. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, does, that's does a lot the of Apple money for just Siri a remote. remote let you interact with the? TV's actual OS? I don't think so. So it's... I haven't needed to because there's only one input. I don't have like Xbox and DVD player plugged into the TV. So when I, I have the Roku remote put away. I just when mm. we sit down on the couch, all I have is the Siri remote. There's nothing else. I just pick that up and press the power button. That boots on the TV, which instantly goes to the Apple TV input. So it's as if the Roku doesn't exist now, <laughs> which is fine because all we watch is uh, Peacock and Discovery Plus and YouTube. So as long as the Apple TV runs those three things, it's fine. But the Apple TV box itself, I still will stand by my point of way too expensive, mm -hmm. way too overkill. Why does the A12 chip need a fan? I don't understand <laughs> what that's being used for. Um, and also, I, I can't figure out how to delete apps. There used to be a way. You hold it. On the old TV, I used... Yeah, you would hold it and press pause, right? That's it. Yeah. It doesn't do that anymore. So, um, on the old TV, it's gone. Uh, when you hold it, you you and it goes into jiggle mode. I think you hit the yeah, not TV but menu. I think it's my it's the it's the right it's pause. Click. I've done it. It's on my yeah. old Apple TV. I and used then it to opens delete up, the first Yeah, and then app. the the control the control uh, the control center opens up and it gives you options to how you what you want to do with that right. app. And then I just delete it. Yeah. It doesn't do that now. Mm. They changed it. You so, can do it on third-party apps. I can delete YouTube, but I can't delete the fitness app or the Apple Music app. Oh, that's like, on purpose. Mm, yeah, they mm. do it. They're, they're like, no, you're going to have the fitness application for when you use Fitness Plus. And I just, uh, they changed that so that I couldn't delete apps. I don't want to be there, which was annoying. And... I don't really care about the TVOS app store. Like I know for our TV usage, we're not we're not going to be downloading games on there. We're not going to be using Fitness Plus. I don't have Apple Music, and I can't get rid of that app. And it's just a you know, dedicated Google YouTube Photos launcher. is about to run out. Uh, so we're not using iCloud Photos, but there's still a Photos app and everything. So all I really care about is the remote, which is fantastic. I just have a hard time justifying 190 bucks for a remote. It's like. Eh. Yeah, I mean the ro the That's remote has to come with because you're using your TV to just launch YouTube, right? It's just a dedicated YouTube player, so it's a hundred and Discovery Plus and Peacock, yeah. Okay, so okay, so you for the remote itself, I mean, I you, you have to go through its UI. If you cannot change, or I guess let me ask you, not I'm not making it definitive. Are you able with the Siri remote 
Are you able to change inputs or no? I don't think so. I might be wrong. There might be some setting I can turn on to let it change inputs, but uh, that's not a concern of mine because there's no other inputs. There's sure. only one, so there's no, no real benefit. No, I'm, I'm asking on we, behalf we never... of me. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I there might be a way. It's going to depend on your TV. I, I've talked with a bunch of people in the Discord that were like, my TV doesn't support the control from the Siri remote, and other people's does. My TV was somewhat new. I think I got it in 2018, so it does let me control it via, what's it called, CEC. Like, you can have a third-party remote control the volume, and a th that's what the Siri remote There's does. There's dedicated it off and apps now that even let you um, have uh, input based off of the TV, and it's almost like it's mm. mappable software, if I remember seeing the yeah. app correctly, that you can go in and just use your phone as to turn on the TV, or maybe not, Maybe it might not be power, because I think yeah, that's a hard one. that. Because my, my TV supports AirPlay, so I can turn it on and off from there Control Center That's on so my crazy. phone and stuff. That's yeah. crazy. I like that. That's so cool. But if I already had an Apple TV, like if I still had my Apple TV 4K from 2017, and I just needed to spend 60 bucks on the remote, this would be no question. I would totally keep it. Like, no question. It's totally worth the 60 bucks. Anybody out there who still has an old Apple TV and you're unhappy with the remote, some people like it. In that case, you know, yeah, fine, keep it. But like, no, if, buy if the you're new unhappy one. with you that remote, the new one, even if you like the old one, come on. The new one is like a thousand percent better. I have I the, the old look. one, but I, I don't have feel. 4K. I have the HD one. Oh, okay. So I haven't. That'll still work. I think it's still yeah, compatible. HD plays to my 4K TV. Yeah, it is compatible. I just, it's, yeah, it, for me, it's like, work. do I want 4K resolution on my 4K TV? Sure. Do I want to pay $190 for it? No. <laughs> It's like whatever team was in control of the remote did an amazing job, and the team in control of the TV box, I think, still is missing the point of a TV it's box. Gary, it's like the guy they who keep made trying the to turn Mouse it into something. Design. Yeah, Magic Mouse Two designer probably designed that Apple TV because in some interview they were like, "Oh, it's got tremendous value in one hundred and eighty dollars." <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> tremendous value. Like, uh, it's, it's not, yeah, that's over three times the price if it was just the remote to have to get the yeah. whole setup, which I'm not in love. And I don't like having to have a box on my TV stand. Like, I prefer that being clean. And I, I, before we just had one cable coming out of our TV, mm -hmm. just power. And that was it. Yep. No HDMI inputs. And that was so much cleaner and better. And now we've got to have this big box with an HDMI cord going out the other side. And I got to try to hide those cables. So it's all like, if this was just a little dongle that plugged in the back, and I could attach that to the same power cable as the TV, it would look so much cleaner. But, take take a note from the mm. iMac team that plugged everything in the back and that has ether somehow. If you got ether, yeah. <laughs> then you can also do HDMI and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I still think it would be a great idea for Apple to partner with some kind of TV maker and make a TV with tvOS by default and just make that the platform and you have little tiles that are HDMI 1, 2, and yeah. 3. I still think that would be a great idea. And this whole buy a big box for $200 that plugs into it's such a dated model with the Fire TV stick and the Roku streaming stick being a thing. It's like, What do you think is holding Apple back from doing that? Because like they could totally make a stick like <laughs> this is i Apple. think they are they of all people should know how to make a small right yeah. exactly computer but they're like oh we need the <laughs> m1 chip in it with all of the processing we power need the like, m1 apple no. tv <laughs> to be honest i, I think that no. i think they are they have been and they continue to experiment with uh with uh doing a, just a full-fledged TV, not an Apple dedicated TV, but at least having the software on there with a partnership with, I mean, they partnered with LG for the monitor to do their cinema display equivalent. Mm -hmm. uh, they could partner with LG again and do the exact same thing, and this time on a TV system in, in, instead of a monitor. And That'd be great. I, it shows the work. And then they can do the whole hype. Like, look, you could plug in USB-C, which means you could do data transfer blah, 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 or display this and airport that and airdrop this, airplay that. Right. Uh, I could see that, definitely. I wouldn't be surprised if they have experiments with it. But to answer your question, Nick, what do, I, what do you think about them, why they haven't done it yet? I think, I, I think they keep hoping 
services is going to catch up to hardware and that <laughs> yeah. that Apple One or Arcade or Fitness Plus and all this other stuff that because yep. what they all have in common right now is that they all all those things I just listed can go on the Apple TV. And I think they're hoping services starts to catch up and mature in the sense that, look, now you have a hub for Fitness Plus, Arcade, Apple TV Plus. Uh, what else did I say? Music. You could do everything. You could all, all the services can exist on Apple TV if you wanted it to and you ha and you subscribe to Apple One. I Pretty just, much, yeah. I what service doesn't come to the TV? I don't know. They're all on the TV, I yeah, guess. Yeah, huh? I think so. Yeah. So I think I think they're hoping that services catches up to the hardware in that sense, and then then they can make a good compelling argument. It's like now you can play all these games, you could do the workouts, you could do this, you could listen to your hi-fi. Uh, Apple Music, you can yeah. do, you, you can do <laughs> still can't, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like eventually, like it's all it'll, it'll all catch up for the most part. I, I feel like that's what's keeping them from doing uh, something more obvious. And like with the box, we can we can promote value with the box if the services would just catch up. And as soon as they realize that people are set in their and they're fine and they don't want to do it for the masses. Um, I think we will see a pivot. I don't know if this is a Tim Cook thing. I don't know if it's a. Uh, uh, I doubt it's correct, but I, I, I don't know. Somebody mm -hmm. is intentionally saying no, because the success of health features on the Apple Watch made them believe we'll have a su same success with uh, Fitness Plus, which I don't, I'm not denying there's a market there, but when you have to hold up innovation or at least evolution in the sense on another product line hardware because of something else that was looking to be successful over here because of a service mm -hmm. i kind of feel like there's a disconnect that's happening there and somebody at the very top is being a bottleneck about this whole thing and i i wouldn't be surprised if this is an ongoing uh debate that they have hey we should look at doing something like that and somebody whether it's tim cook or who is somebody saying no for whatever reason there must be because it seems so obvious and Right? Clear. How, right. How much better the TV stick experience would be or how much more affordable it could be. It could be just because Apple's not seeing much slow sales with it. Maybe they're just, it's selling so well. They're like, why would we make a cheaper one? We don't need one. Everyone's willing it's to like, spend. Give me one that I don't care. I don't want to play arcade on it. So I don't care about no fan yeah. to cool it down. I just want to, like, that's not why I want to watch the TV, but like, but you could play arcade and it's going to need them. I'm not going to play arcade, but then you get the, you get to do fitness and all that. It's like, that's an app. That's, that's a service that has nothing to do with the hardware on it. You know, like I feel like yeah. just the stick is so obvious. A little thumb thing, just put it in, apple it up. There you go. The real It'd money is in so the remote. So much better. <laughs> I'll buy the remote. I'll happily pay sixty bucks for the remote. I know the remote was the remote was a great idea. Well, they know they can't was, charge one hundred and eighty dollars for a stick, though. Apple would no. charge that much. No, for they a know stick? they can't. Oh, I mean, they know they can't spend one hundred percent charge one hundred and eighty dollars for a stick, so. They don't. They don't want to. You know, reduce those. Margins. They can charge seven hundred dollars for wheels, though. Totally. <laughs> those are totally worth it. I've replaced. All, That's. Worth I it. went to Big O Tires the other day to get new summer tires for my car, and they were like, <laughs> "Oh, that'll be five hundred dollars for your wheels." I'm like, <laughs> "Just five hundred? Okay." I could get Mac Pro wheels for that. <laughs> Almost. Almost. I could get like three Almost. wheels. <laughs> you should put the Mac Pro wheels on the bottom of the iMac. Ooh. So you can move it. Really, really. Because, you know, this thing is not right portable at all. It's just way mm -mm. too heavy. Need to roll it around my desk. I do like yeah. the uh, that would be nice the one. little pads, though. Those little pads at the bottom. The little two. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I, I, I like this design over, like, the little circles or the big U. I think it's, uh, I think it's an improvement. Sorry, I just saw I'm it. excited for... Um, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about it. Like, there's there's growing rumors of the M1X MacBook Pros and potentially a Mac oh, okay. Mini M1X right. launching on June 7th. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking now, I'm even more confused. Well, I'm not confused. I know exactly why they released the 24-inch iMac when they did and why they put June 7th right outside the return window <laughs> for the 24-inch iMac. So they were like, this is how we get a bunch of people to buy an M1 iMac. Because if they would have waited and launched... Two weeks and uh, one day. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks and one day. If they would have waited and launched uh, the two IMAX sizes simultaneously, uh -huh. no one would have cared about the 24-inch yep. model. 
I feel like no one would have bought it. That all would have gotten swept under the rug. If they launched the 32-inch and the 24-inch, and the 32-inch had M1X, and the 24 had M1, everyone would be like, whoa, okay, M1X, let's try this, let's try this. Oh, there's a 24-inch? Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> let's focus on this one. Let's focus on the big one. And Apple was like, oh, that's cute. Yeah, right, we'll whatever. release them separately. Release the boring one first so that we get a bunch of people buying it. It becomes the talk of the town for months. Everybody's bought one. Everyone's using one. We got lots of people enjoying them. And then later, now we're like, actually, there's a way better one with a way faster chip that's bigger. And and now and the bezels are back. All the YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it. All the YouTubers have to buy a new iMac, so they're gonna have two iMacs now. And that and was Nick a really and Sweeney's still gonna them. take that sweet, sweet B roll. Get mm. it all in. Oh yeah. And then send it up. Glorious 4K. Mm. Sorry, Nick. I, Am I boring you? What? Uh oh. <laughs> My AirPods. Dang it. Nope. I can't, oh, I can't hear, him. hear him. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> that's, <laughs> oh, that's why he's making that face. Okay. All right. We'll carry take on. over. Yeah, we'll take over. The Do you think that they intentionally, like, if they were not ready to ship this iMac until May 21st, why not wait until June 7th? You right. Think? Yeah. No, no. It, you're right. They, they, they absolutely know what they're doing about the boring 24 inch one and and i mean it, it's it makes sense too because this chip has been rumored and around in existence of, of testing stuff for so long um right i wouldn't be surprised if they initially thought we we're gonna put the 24 inch uh we were gonna put it out last year you know uh at oh in november in november but then they're like wait a yeah. minute what if we do something a little like this just an inch squeeze out the m1 life a little bit longer before we move to m1x and uh right yeah i, I after june said no but nobody's gonna care nobody's going to care uh, <laughs> and I, that's good because for me my eyes have always been hard set on getting uh selling the the macbook air for the beautiful macbook pro that i've been desperately waiting for ports no ports mac safe sd card, doesn't I, what i needed was a macbook pro i love the macbook air for what it's done for me it's held up during my transition but um, mm -hmm. no, I, I, we're, we're done playing around. It's time to bring out the X, baby. That's that's what we need. So this is this is the biggest uh, the biggest thing that I was thinking about. Um, I really want the M1X chip, but I, I think it makes more sense for them to wait till the fall uh, for the M1X chip um, for a few reasons. They had the uh, Apple event with the M1 chip in October November time period. You know that was kind of like the late fall. They, they introduced mm -hmm. all these new processors, and it was great. Um, but if they kind of break the cycle and in June just release the M1X chip, it's going to lead to another janky update cycle. And what I was really looking forward to mainly with these Macs, these M1 chips, was being able to have a super consistent update cycle, just like we do with the iPhones. We know every single year we're going to get a new A-series chip. We're going to get uh, it in September, maybe October if there's a pandemic, but uh, in September of every year. And that makes like the buying decision really easy as a creative. Like I know in, in September, if I buy an iPhone, it's going to be good for 12 months, right? There's really no question about that unless you know I do something like break it or whatever. But like... Unless last year. It, it must last year. Yeah, it's going to be good for 11 months. And then I got the mini, so I think it's only good, for, it's 10 good for 10 months. Yeah, <laughs> so... Basically, that was not, not a good good example, but um, with the Macs, it's always been really confusing because Apple's waiting on Intel or NVIDIA or all these other suppliers to finish their new Cabby Lake processors. And so Apple has all of their Mac ready, all of the new iMac, except for the new Intel chips. And they're waiting on Intel for the new Intel chips. And Apple uh, Intel finally does the chip. Apple can then release the iMac. But that makes their entire uh, release schedule based on all these different companies. And that's kind of what the beauty of the M1 Apple architecture is. They're able to bring the GPU and CPU in-house to where they have full stack control over the release cycle. And so what I'm really looking forward to, and I think it makes a ton of sense, um, and so say, tell me if you think I'm wrong here, but I think it makes a ton of sense for them to, yeah, and you, you always do. I mean, that, that, that's fair. Um, <laughs> but if they, if they wait for the M1X chip to, in the fall of 2021, and then in the fall of 2022 release the M2 chip, and have that cycle go where you have M1 chip one year, the X chip the year the year after that in the fall. Everything's in the fall. Then that way as a creator, I don't f I don't feel like I'm going to be buying something that's going to get super outdated because that's 
the big question most of the tech community, right? Like, I want to start a YouTube channel, or maybe I have one, and uh, what Mac do I get and when do I get it, right? And that's always the question because no one knows, not even Apple. And as someone who's looking to get like a... <laughs> Apple says now. Apple says always now. <laughs> but, you know, you don't want to be that guy who get it now. bought the Intel MacBook Pro two, two weeks and a day before the uh, M1 Max. That was sad. Um, but like... Scott. As a, yeah, poor Scott. As, as a guy who's looking to buy a really nice M1X chip, um, I, if, if Apple comes out with the, M1, the M1X chip in September... In, in, sorry, in June, in a couple June. of days here... Um, I'm probably going to get it, but I'm going to be pretty apprehensive about this M2 chip that would then likely come in the fall. You know, if we're getting the M1X chip on everything in June, that means probably in the fall we'll get the M2 chip. And then I'll be like, well, is the M2 chip going to be cheaper and, you know, just about as powerful? Am I, you know, what's going on here? All right, you have lots of thoughts. Go ahead. Um, Drew, Go ahead, I Andy. choose Drew. He's prettier today. Oh. He did his hair. Did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I didn't. I just got up. So... I think you're thinking of all Mac silicon too similarly. You're, you're treating it like the iPhone, which only has one series of chips, mm -hmm. and they always have one line. The Mac is going to have at least two, maybe more. Yeah. Um, it's possible the Mac Pro could get a third tier even above the X series, but I don't think it's a XDR. janky release schedule at all because moving forward, yeah, there, there's got to be a entry level low powered chip, and there also has to be an extreme high powered chip, and uh, you don't have to believe in Bloomberg, but Bloomberg's got a pretty reliable track record, and according to their sources or what they are expecting to happen, M2 is coming later this year, yeah. potentially October, November time frame. And the M2, similar to how, um, what's a good example? A13 was not faster than A12X, right? Like, you have your X series, and mm -hmm. then you have your entry level, you have your iPhone series and your okay. iPad Pro series. Similarly, M1X can come out in the, at WWDC, and every year we can get another M2X, M3X. That's the higher, that's like the tier two, the more expensive Macs that are more performance in the M2, M3. That's going to be more about better battery life, not extremely high performance, but according to Bloomberg, the next generation MacBook Air will be rocking an M2, and it's not faster than M1X, but it has more graphics cores than the M1, and it has better efficiency than the but, M1. But so they're going to be improving and iterate, iterating two separate tiers. You have your entry tier and your high-end tier, and I don't think they need to alternate every year. I get that M1 could probably hold people over for two years, but Apple's not like that. Apple likes to have their annual, you know, before they were doing MacBook refreshes twice a year, and I know we don't like that as a customer and a consumer, but I think Apple does. Similarly, they want to have rapid, iterative, okay, here's another chip, here's another chip, we found a way to make this one faster. I don't think it has to be one year of M1 and then one year of M1X and then one year of M2. Like, I think they'll grow separately. Very, very much you're, like you're how wrong. Tesla... You're wrong, Drew, but go ahead, Randy. So that's how uh, <laughs> that's how uh, uh, the Tesla approach is like when it's ready, they they want to get it out as quickly as possible. I was actually going to say yeah. almost almost verbatim what, what Drew was saying uh, about how they approach the silicon chip. I think the, the the biggest hurdle right now is we're in the transition phase from Intel to Apple Silicon, and, and that's why right. uh, we, we like that. But I get, I totally, I'm with you, Nick. I understand the the simplicity of what how we appreciate an iPhone, and it's almost like clockwork in your schedules. Like we know fall time is app iPhone season, and it's easier for us to cover it as as journalists. It's easier to buy as consumers. It's easy to follow for, for <laughs> annual reports when when it comes to even being a shareholder and just the whole thing. It's so it's so clean. It's one chip, and this is the best of the best. And let me give you the best of the best. Um, and we love that with iPhone, and I understand the simplicity of wanting to put that in all the product lines. But iPhone has to be so hyper specific because it's the top selling hardware that they have. Um, it does make sense for it to to keep this continuity of staying on schedule mm -hmm. and kind of expecting, oh, this new chip, this new thing, this new that, as we expect everything to be better, faster, more efficient, and all that. But when it comes to our bigger devices that we have, uh, exactly what would you saying? The stack, the stagnating of it. Is is very very common and I, I understand I I understand it to a degree the same way they play with the iPad Pros and they give us the X series X series never gets released at the exact same time, mm -hmm. um, and that to me makes sense because it's like that's it's it's the 
It's the not a year apart either. Yeah. And not a year apart. It's the same way. One year, I, I, iPhone recently. six. six apart. You have iPhone mm-hmm. six and iPhone six S, and S was the internal bump, and we get that on a smaller scale with these X chips. It's just a bump, so to say, for mm-hmm. for that series of chip. Yeah. Um, I, I I would love to say yeah, it's clean and it's it's like it's scheduled, it's clockwork, and we know what to expect. But I don't think it would help them on a on a longer term to be competitive when it, now that they've you know ticked off Intel and everything else that everyone's going to try to beat them to the punch. And even though M1 is performing amazing right now, if Apple can stay ahead of the curb still and release it in quicker iterations in an X series, in an M2 series, and and so forth like that, and stay light years ahead the way they have with Apple Watch and everything else, then it, it's better for the company to just be quicker turnaround with that to say here's what we got and here are these extremely efficient devices to go with them and here's the smaller one and it does not make it minimal but it makes the most business sense so from a annual perspective or even like a biannual perspective you're right randy it makes a ton of sense to have those fast iterations but i'm kind of also looking at it from a five to ten year span of uh how they can keep this pace of development i guess so in the sure. in the market um you know business 101 they teach you that you know you don't want to be so far ahead of your competitors that like you kind of lose them in the dust right like if if apple were to come out with the m2 chip or m1x chip let's say m1x chip that's twice as fast as the m1 chip which was already eight times faster than your intel chips which is you know it just kind of out blows everything then you're gonna you're gonna not be able to maintain that level of uh, one upping yourself, right? So if they're if they're already if they're already twenty percent faster than their competition, why make themselves hundred percent faster than their competition next year when they could make themselves forty percent faster than the competition next year, make you buy new products, and then a year later make it sixty percent faster than the competition, two years later after that, and then a whole you know three years later stretch that out nice and long so you get the most amount of money from it, right? Because if Apple came out with the uh, let's call it the M5 chip tomorrow, you know, the hy- totally hypothetical chip that smokes even the most amazing supercomputer in wherever in the world Mac like if Pro whatever no like even like yeah. a server farm supercomputer like f- this hypothetical oh chip you know everyone's gonna go buy Takes that chip aws offline yeah. you know exactly like no <laughs> if apple did this total hypothetical if apple did that everyone would go buy a computer with that chip right and apple would see amazing sure. sales for like one year and then after that apple's not gonna you know it saying that you know things don't scale exponentially which they kind of do in the computer world but you know if they make this huge investment into this you're not going to you're not going to be able to keep that pace up and just look with iPhones like we've had this happen with iPhones A7 was the biggest the biggest uh, the biggest curve growth curve we see we've seen year over year since uh, since the iPhone uh, went to Apple silicon um, with the A4 yeah. chip, but uh, but that is slowed down so much right so the A what do we have 814 chips in the iPhone 12s Honestly, an A12 chip is just fine for everything people do. Like, Randy, you're recording your video right now on an iPhone 11 Pro. Like, it's just fine. It's true. And, he is right. And it, 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 A13. And A13. Ahead. Yeah, on an, on an, A, uh, on an <laughs> iPhone 12. Sorry. Um, but, like, it's I'm just gotten to the point, right, where these phones, it, it's so iterative and it's so, like, it's gotten so good too fast that like there's really the chip's not a reason to upgrade every year for me at least when i when i see I apple you. on on stage the a14 been, chip yeah. is like 10 times faster than whatever it was three years ago and you're just like okay wonderful mm-hmm. my last 10 iphones have worked perfectly fine with like yep. no speed bumps i want to show what other kind of features can you use this silicon for i'm not necessarily worried about the silicon itself what can it do like functionally mm-hmm. and so that's why sure. i think it makes a ton of sense for them to kind of stretch this out because to be completely honest, we're not going to see another M1 size leap in for performance for a long time. Uh, this was kind of Intel. But you said V9. V9. V9 is going to be a great leap, but it's only a 30% <laughs> leap. Uh, M1 was a three times yeah. leap. So, you know, it's, it's V9 is yeah. going to help. And I'm sure the M2 chip is going to be on V9 or maybe the M1X is. I don't know. 
Um, and so that, that's gonna help provide this iterative change. But uh, it would make a ton of sense though for Apple to stretch this out as long as possible, make us buy as many devices with each one of these iterations of chips <laughs> as possible instead of doing it all I do not once. disagree with you. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with you on, on, a, on a macro scale. I understand where you're coming from. And Apple Watch and iPhone, uh, Apple Watch for sure is the best example. I was like, I don't, I'm rocking a three-year-old uh, watch and I'm like, oh, it's, I'm just here. now experiencing a bad, Let's do it. battery Let's do it. one, right? Wrist bump. It. A wrist bump. Wrist bump. Boom. <laughs> Boom. I think I, I know what you're saying because you are right. You don't want to give everything you got all in one year and then not be able to rapidly improve on that. I just don't think it's relevant to the release schedule because they're, they're two separate types of chips. It's like it's more about I think you can still do that with a biannual schedule because it's not about, oh, we got to give all of our performance all at once. It's about this chip for this demographic is for high performance course for efficiency course this demographic who's more power hungry they're okay having eight high performance cores and two efficiency cores and someone like the mac pro they're comfortable having 60 high performance cores and it's not about oh we gave away all of our performance at once because all we can do is come up with uh more and more cores to s stick on one chip it's about this chip makes sense for this demographic but it doesn't make sense for this demographic mm -hmm. so we're going to upgrade them both every year M1X is going to get upgraded maybe every June. Every quadruple UDC, they announce another X series, which is about more high-performance chips. And every fall, they release the high-efficiency chips, and that's what the M1 series is. And you can, over time, Apple will make those individual cores faster. And I agree, it makes sense for them to do little upgrades each year. That way they can continue progress, just like with iPhone, silicon. You don't jump straight to the most high-performance yeah. you possibly can. You just... Those on the individual core level, they will get better, but for the cores and how they're made right now, M1X is the type of chip in silicon that wouldn't make sense in a MacBook Air. So that's why they keep it separate. That's why you refresh two two lines or potentially three if the Mac Pro goes off on some crazy power trip. I got to pause you for a second. <laughs> Drew, your iPad is doing a Talos of Tech style... <laughs> As you talk, it's as like, he's going like this, it zooms yes. in, pulls back. It, it, it it's doing the Talos of Tech format of punching in one of music playing. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm watching you, and I'm like, I'm watching a live recording of. Here's what you got to put. Well, because your hands are going like that, so the camera has to pull out and it punches in. Center stage is wonderful. I got to tell I you, love, the whole time feature. you were doing this, I was really interested in what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's amazing I love that. center stage that's is, has to be on feature. all things it needs to be on iphones it needs to be on Macs. bring it to the imax i know please. that's I, I was kind of shocked that center stage wasn't on the imac because I, I i it just got 1080 so <laughs> i know i know, I know. It, just got, it just got 10. Nick, we can't give them all at once. True. They have to get you buy a new that. one. That means Apple will have another feature to say in two years when they update the iMac. Now they know how to get you to buy next year's iMac. We Center can't stage. give it some all at once. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. <laughs> Woo. All right. I think it's, yeah, it's. It's possible for them to still not give us everything at once, but still be upgrading different strokes for different folks. You know, different <laughs> chips for different Macs. Hmm. Different chins this, for different this chip men's huh. bezels. Bezels. Different bezels <laughs> for different fezzles. What? <laughs> um, okay, new question. I have another question for you, Drew. Unless it's too soon to okay. talk about, because I know you want to reserve some stuff, but the. Uh, Probably not mini LED iPad that you're rocking. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, um, that's not a question. Tell, tell, tell us about it. <laughs> I, I, about I was going to, I was going to, yeah, I, 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 okay. I expect you to keep it. Mm. Oh, okay. We're doing the guessing thing. <laughs> I, ex I, I, I suspect you're going to keep this one. Because it's beautiful. It's kind of a complicated answer because it might depend on what gets announced on June seventh. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. So, so that's why everything's riding on it, and that, to that I understand. But in its current state of future proofing, from your 2018 one, all right, um, knowing mm -hmm. that you'll probably hold on to this one for quite some time as well, at least two years. Oh yeah, um, at least. 
is it enough today to keep you having it on Mac OS or, or iPad OS? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Yeah, that would be nice. Is it is it um, enough right now, knowing hmm. that you're future proofing, you got the headspace to grow in it, um, regardless of dub dub. I know we're, we're we're fortunate enough to be in that time frame. We're like, all right, let's see what it is. But even if it's just enough, just excluding all that right now, as you use it today, you live streamed on it. You're 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 doing podcasts on it right now. You're doing a lot of well, things right just now. Just FaceTime. <laughs> well, that's well, that's what I mean. Like you're you're working. Yeah. You're working with it. It is a mm -hmm. work device right now. It's not just play. You're you're genuinely losing yeah. it, using it for work. Is it enough right, right now for you to like worst case scenario? I, was, I would still keep it if I can sell my old iPad Pro. Okay. For a good price. That's that's the ultimate factor here because if it was a eleven hundred dollar upgrade if we're just talking m1 mini led and center stage i don't think it's worth eleven hundred dollars but if you can sell your old ipad and turn that into a five hundred dollar upgrade or less then yeah i love it like mini led is kind of i think it's going to be like 120 hertz some people will see it and some people don't my wife is one of the people that does not see it i we watch a lot of content on our iPad, especially when we go to the bedroom and want to turn on a TV show or something. And I noticed instantly the black bars with the XDR. I was like, whoa, it's so immersive and it blends in with the bezel. And then because I was curious, you know, we I brought it in there and I didn't tell her it was the new one. I didn't make a comment about it or anything. I just pulled out the magic keyboard and started watching it. And she was watching it. I was like 20 minutes in. I was like, so do you notice the black bars? And she was like, oh, is this the new one? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's the new one. She's like, oh, okay. It was dark, so she couldn't tell it was space. Sure. But <laughs> then about three or four days later, I switched it with the old iPad Pro <laughs> and put that in the Magic Keyboard case and was using that a little bit and just left the because it was uploading the tech video. It was the one I edited on LumaFusion. And yeah. I brought the 2018 iPad Pro in there and started playing the show. And I noticed it pretty obvious. I was like, yeah, I the bar the black pixels are more bright now and i can just tell looking at the home screen by the contrast ratio i know the brightness doesn't make a huge difference but it was very similar to for me it was very similar to when i first looked at an iphone 10 at an apple store i don't know if you guys remember yeah. the first time looking at a OLED, oled iphone yes i do but the colors were noticeably contrast different yep. like i was like whoa they're way deeper it's way richer and Everyday people, I don't think, will pay attention to that type of thing. Just like iPhone XR sells great, iPhone 11 sells great, LCD, not great contrast ratio. Average person picks that up and thinks, yeah, it's good enough, it's fine. Yeah. And I think it's the same thing with mini LED. It's like, I, I personally totally get why Apple was okay shipping it just with, just with the larger size, because I still think probably 80 to 90% of consumers won't notice the difference between lcd and mini led like they're pretty close um the oh, iphone 10 was probably slightly more noticeable because it was uh more pixel dense whereas there's no difference in pixel density and it was the new it's, form factor like there was so much happening yeah, there's a it. bunch of million other changes too so when i tried mini led i do notice it for those curious but i don't expect everyone to i think that everyday people probably won't um you guys both saw the pro display yep. xdr yes if you noticed contrast ratio differences on that immediately, I would say then yes, hmm. you will also notice on the. Have mini you seen LED. any blooming? It's. Um, people kept telling me to look for that. I couldn't find it. Okay. It's possible just my eyes yeah. are bad, or I don't have a good blooming detection, like where it's like when a flower is, is finally dark. planted in the right place and the sun hits it just perfectly and it opens up. <laughs> There was some video someone sent me while we were live that was like, watch this video and see if you can notice blooming. And it's just like an all black video with a white box mm. that moves around. I could not tell. I didn't mm. notice any blooming. Um, but I do notice just a tad bit of the bleeding on the edges where it gets slightly darker mm. on the perimeter. Okay. But it's not, I have to look for it. It's not something I, I would have picked up on if I if no one asked me to there were several tweets that are like do you notice the bleeding on the edge and i was like 
Oh yeah. <laughs> if I look really hard, I can see it, but it's it's, it's very slight and it's not. Yeah, it's definitely not a deal breaker. If anything, it looks kind of, it's kind of like uh, curved corners almost. It's like you guys tell me that. It, if I wouldn't even know that's a thing, if I'm looking at, it, I'm like, huh? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> it's kind of like curved corners in the sense that it doesn't really help, but it kind of adds to the yeah immersion of the hardware. the The little darkness on the edges is almost like that internal drop shadow. Mm. Or it's mm. I don't know. It kind of helps blur. It's some people. I could understand someone not liking it because the old iPad Pro doesn't do that. It's just on pixels, off pixels. Right. But when I picked up my old iPad Pro after using the mini LED one for a while, I was like, ooh. Um, <laughs> nice. The contrast oh. ratio thing, I picked up on it right away. I was like, ooh, you're oh broken. I don't so want to play am, with you anymore. I don't want to play with you anymore. But I'm scared because I haven't found a good buyer for this yet. So I, I there's still a chance of me That's because you haven't LED. offered it to Nick yet. Nope, I don't need it. Oh yeah, Nick. I already, I already stole my sister's back. <laughs> I'm, I'm using my uh, sister's iPad. You can buy mine and resell it. No thanks. <laughs> Unbent, unbent iPad Pro. Uh, but so uh, the uh, other uh, scenario I could see myself returning the Mini LED iPad Pro is if they announce my dream scenario, which is you can now dual boot Mac OS. Now mm -hmm. I want a lot bigger SSD. In that case, I would want. At least uh, five twelve, maybe more. And oh, I'd be that's different. I mean, money. you're you're going to return it to get this just a, a bigger spec version of it, though. So I wouldn't count that as a. Not yeah, that doesn't it. exactly count. Yeah. But I would have to wait like a month. Oh, you poor thing. Because they're so back ordered. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get it. That would be frustrating. So, uh, to my understanding, then, um, if they say you can dual boot, you're going to say. They probably won't. You're, you're, but uh, hypothetically, because you said that that right yeah. there, you said y you 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 specifically mentioned that. So, if that does get announced, to hell with the f saving the money. I'm you would you would uh, sell, yeah. or whether you sell the 2018 iPad Pro or not, you would still get this talking, version. Then, then you would get this year's version. Hmm. So I Starlinked now. Oh, okay. Just try it. I didn't hear your question at all. all right. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Oh, I was trying to. I was trying to be very seamless, and maybe Nick was like, "Oh yeah, he hears you." I was. So he, Nick was very good at going like this. Nick was very good at doing this. As I, as I'm actually just scrolling <laughs> get through Twitter attempt. on my other screen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I did hear you, but I want you to ask the question better this time. Okay. Mm. Let me say it better. <laughs> if they say you could dual boot Mac OS onto the M1 uh, iPad. You you don't care about some of the 2018 at that point the 2018 iPad Pro. Oh. You you would regardless of what happens with that one, you will buy the 2021 and simultaneously you'd be trying to sell the 2018 one, but the 2021 will be in yeah. your lineup. Okay. I definitely have no interest in keeping two iPad Pros. Like Obviously. regardless of regardless of which mini LED one I get, I still want to sell this. I have no purpose in keeping it. In fact, we might even end up selling my wife's iPad because she barely uses it. So there might be multiple iPads going away. I'm kind of in the camp of, let's just trade it in and get the credit. And she's yeah. kind of like, no, we can sell it for much higher. And I'm like, I don't know. So, no one wants this. But So you, 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 are, you are set on getting uh, this year's iPad then, regardless. I really want to keep it, but... If it, if if I cannot get a good deal on this, then I'll probably send it back and just live with my 2018. But it'll, <gasps> it'll depend on how <sighs> the buying progress goes. I love center stage. I love mini LED, but, but yeah, the future putting, putting it behind. I the, I mean, this is still for what I need an iPad for. This can still do it. You know, mm -hmm. this is that this just does it way more fun, which is why I prefer yeah. it and i i also love the space gray look of it now it's Ooh. like it looks yeah. like cool. um, ladies and gentlemen we got them we got you well the white bezels have kind of scared me <laughs> straight black you know <laughs> they've scared wait me a back minute. on course wait a minute mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. now now that they're discontinuing the magic keyboard accessories and stuff i'm like i want to get everything space gray as much as possible before but, black um, goes away like, as a what? whole <laughs> There's nothing work related if we're not counting Final Cut, you know, if we're not counting um, being able to, you know, I can still do everything I need to with the iMac Pro. For for what I need yeah. an iPad for social media, 
email management, um, Discord, and, uh, and video thumbnails. I very intentionally, I very intentionally avoided bringing up Final Cut for this purpose. Mm. I avoided it. I avoided the Luma Fusion discussion. I avoided all that uh, because, on the merits of uh, on the merits of not having that software presented to you, I was more curious if the iPad hardware and future proofing off of the idea that maybe Luma Fusion would be the only video thing, and that's it. iPad OS is still iPad OS. If the iPad you have in your possession right now, the one that we're talking on, was was that enough to say I want you and and I want to keep you? And the answer is yes, contingent on what yes. happens with the 2018. And also, correct. Uh, the answer is a 100% yes, regardless if you could dual boot. Now, mm, you can't dual sure. boot, then it's all about the contingency of selling the 2018 iPad. I would assume, and it is an assumption, but if Mm -hmm. Dub Dub says you can put Final Cut Pro on this now. I would assume that within itself is the big deciding factor if you would even keep it or not. I assume Final Cut would be enough to say, regardless of the 2018 iPad, I'm going to get it because maybe it would fix your Blackmagic situation. Mm. I think iPad OS is the limiting factor. I talked to Nick about it when I first discovered this problem, but iPad OS doesn't support ProRes. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is not a Luma Fusion holdback. I'm sure if iPadOS supported it, Luma Fusion would be all about that. Luma Fusion has literally no point in not allowing ProRes. It's if they could support it, they would. They would have done it a long time ago. Ah. Um, the reason they haven't is because they can't. And Apple doesn't support their own video codecs on iPadOS, that is, which that is, is silly. Still mind blowing. Like Apple made. ProRes. I don't get that at all. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're making two terabyte iPads with 16 gigs of RAM for $2,000. With an M1 chip. And I'm like, hey, Apple, I want to use and the M1 chip and a Thunderbolt port, all of this amazing hardware. I would, it's Nick's I would perfect come MacBook. Close. It was. Yeah. I would come close to saying the iPad Pro hardware is perfect. Hmm. It's not. That's why I say I come close because I would still let, yeah, some more Thunderbolt ports would be nice in a 16-inch yes. size. Yes. There's some... There's some other things I would love, but in its current state, I have almost no requests for the hardware. It is like amazing display, great refresh rate, great battery life, great cameras, great M1 chip, great Thunderbolt port. Everything is fantastic, and what I'll disagree with you on, Randy, Final Cut is no longer high on my priority list after Ooh. editing a whole video with LumaFusion. Mm. I had to relearn a few things. I had to do some keyboard shortcuts and stuff, but I edited that whole video hey. off Luma Fusion. Mm. And I was like, this is fine. Mm. I could do this. Mm. That's it was, awesome. It was, there was a few things that were a little clunky, um, minor tweaks here and there that Final Cut has. They're, they're, I wouldn't be against Final Cut, obviously. If they do come out with it, I'll be like, cool, that's awesome. But it's no longer like a contingency for me. Mm. It's no longer, oh, it really needs Final Cut. It's like, eh, it's got Luma Fusion, And... For the type of video editing I do, you know, I had to get a little creative to get the intro to yeah. work. You, I, and the I outro. Saw that. Did you export that as an MP4 <laughs> file on your Mac and then use the uh, keyer on LumaFusion? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's just the green screen yep. key. And I was like, okay, that works. That gets the job done. And I can throw in multiple audio files. I can throw yep. in music and the jump cuts. And there, it was a little glitchy at a few parts. There might be some LumaFusion updates that need to happen. There was a time where I was playing and it wouldn't play audio. And I was like, oh. Mm. Did you, so did you pair your mouse to the iPad? Were you editing? No, this was on the trackpad. Wow. Just, oh, just the magic keyboard. You edited it on a trackpad. Oh. Well, it's different. I, I don't think people track understand. Track. I love my track. Oh, you guys I are always ooh. edit on the mouse, but oh, it's very mouse different life editing. for life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very different though because on Final Cut, your time head moves with your mouse mm -hmm. as you That's move right. around. That's Luma right. Fusion doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. The time it's head center. is fixed. fixed. Yep. yep. So what my jump cuts involve a lot of is side scrolling, mm -hmm. which I can do with the trackpad. And whenever the time head gets to the volume level that I want to cut, I just do Command B, I think, yep. and that cuts in Luma Fusion. Yep. So I'm just scrolling sideways to exactly where the volume ends and then command b command b command b and it was keeping up pretty well there were a few glitches there were a few times where i would do command b and it would freeze for a second i don't think it was the m1 I think is it was your Luma. audio synchronized with your video before because i've noticed if i remember in luma fusion correctly like keeping those two in sync was kind of a problem for me because you have to cut both of them 
You well, can't merge them together. I couldn't put ProRes in oh, the timeline. Yeah, okay. I forgot so about that. Sorry. I didn't yeah, have yeah, the chance okay, to... Got it. Sorry. No, yeah. that's okay. I <laughs> I had to record off the iPad camera yeah. itself. Okay. So thankfully, video and yeah. audio were all put together. But I, I, I've i done it before. I know there are ways I can plug in my mic to my Blackmagic yeah. and make it uh-huh. in sync by default. It's just a little bit compressed. That's why I don't do it. But... Um, I, I just know that now that after trying to do like all my work off of the iPad Pro in its current state, Final Cut is not the limiting factor. Mm. That's not what's preventing Hey-o. the switch. It may be for many people. Uh, that there's plenty of people that probably use more features in Final Cut than I do. But how quickly the video exported, and it was not just a smaller bit rate. That's what mm. I think a lot of people were misunderstanding. I tried to explain in the video. I don't yeah. think people listen to everything I say, but I, I literally said the bit rate from LumaFusion is higher mm-hmm. than that of Final Cut. The, the ended file was a bigger file than what Final Cut was done, and LumaFusion finished exporting the same duration video clip like half, at half the time it took the iMac Pro. Okay, yeah, that's... Wow. So I was like, why is the M1 twice as fast I can hear Randy, yeah, but I, we can hear. I can hear. Everybody. He says he can't. He's an exclamation mark. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm going to talk because Randy both Internet. of you can hear me. Um, the M1 okay. iPad is just amazing. I cannot cannot wait for there to be a 16 inch version of this M1 iPad I wish. because then that would allow me to not have to get the MacBook Pro, and it would also need to dual boot, right? Mm. Like I want, I want a dual yeah. booting. M1 iPad Pro that dual boots into Mac OS. So you guys don't disagree on that at all? You think that's a good dual idea? Booting of dual booting? Dual booting? 100%. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, the only thing that would limit me, I would need a dual boot 100% and then I, I'd say to hell with everything else because uh, logic, <laughs> logic is still logic for me and mm-hmm. that's the deciding yeah. factor for an iPad uh, OS limiting factor is uh, utilizing logic as uh, in depth as I do. So if I cannot get uh, an iPad equivalent of it, there is no Luma Fusion of Logic. Um, Not th- really. Then dual booting is would be the way to go, and that would be my dedicated uh, audio source. Right, I've met, I've been met with a lot of resistance whenever I suggest that, but I have oh I, I have saw thought it through <laughs> so many times, and I'm like. No, it just makes perfect sense because iPad OS. The, the problem with all of the alternatives to not dual booting mm-hmm. is that they all require way more complicated exactly. resources. On one end, I'm like, look, Apple has already built and designed Mac OS. For and the it M1 already chip. runs on the M1. <laughs> We're basically talking, not exactly, but bi- essentially a flip of a switch. Yeah. It's telling an BIOS, iPad, yeah. hey, boot into Mac OS mm-hmm. instead of iPad OS. So simple. So little work would be required. And everyone's alternative is, no, that's stupid. Just make iPad OS better. And I'm not against making iPad OS better, but I'm just saying the amount of time and work it's going to take to get every single Mac OS feature that we need on iPad OS, it's going to take years. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. A lot of people are because DubDub hasn't happened yet. A lot of people are just saying like, "Oh, every wish list you can think of, every dream scenario will suddenly happen." Yes. And I'm more pessimistic, probably, because I'm just like, no, they're probably going to come out with two things from iOS that are now on the I- calculator app. And, uh, <laughs> now you can put widgets other uh, places on the home screen. And it's like, and also they're going to do one or two things. They're not going to bring all the Mac OS features we need in one upgrade. And then the other alternative people kept pitching was, well, just give a MacBook a touchscreen. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. So here's That's, the thing about the that comment. Fix the problem. The comment about saying make iPad better. This is iPad better. They've been making it mm-hmm. better every year. It hasn't gotten worse. <laughs> it's been around. Yeah. For this is I. Years. This is iPad better. This is iPad no longer just big blown up iOS anymore. This. Yeah. This is iPad better, and it's not good enough. It, that's just what it is. So to say, we'll just allocate more resources and make it better. What do you think they've been doing? They, that's that's exactly what this <laughs> this is. So it's not working. To make right. to make Mac OS touch screen does not it doesn't fix it doesn't fix the issue because now and that's way more complicated because is Mac extre- isn't optimized for touch. Right. And so what you're trying to say is make the 
2015 MacBook touchscreen. That's what you're trying to say. Because <laughs> what, what, if you make Mac OS touchscreen and, and you're uh, equating that to putting it on MacBooks and iMacs and stuff like that, all you're saying is take an iPad now that has an M1 chip and put more ports on it then. Yeah. It's the exact mm -hmm. same thing. It'd be easier just to give iPads more ports with bigger keyboard uh, uh, accessories and plugins and peripherals and stuff like that. Right. That's not. And the iPad is just so much more versatile between Face ID and it's so a, a it's cellular so option. the fluidity on iPad with the 120 uh, hertz refresh rate. Everything about iPad OS is is so optimized and perfect that downscaling Mac OS, bringing it down to the iPad level, is hurting Mac OS, in my opinion, that way. If you try to uh, crunch that down into an mm -hmm. iPad fixture. Whereas if you just dual boot, and it's a, it's its own operating system, it's quicker. And we're not saying abandon one or the yeah. other. No, exactly. everyone understands no and that. still we're, make we're, iPad we're OS better. Just Mac OS. We love it iPad for this, extremely... for FaceTime calls, yeah. and for, and for uh, Pip, Pip well, and for I'm using, using iMessage. Oh, well, yeah. all right. I don't. I'm using this. I love FaceTime. We're talking on about this. an option. Yeah. Yes. We're not talking about a requirement that everyone would have to put up with. If you don't want Mac OS on the iPad, if you like your doctor, keep your, you can keep your doctor. <laughs> that <laughs> if you like your iPad, you can keep <laughs> iPad OS. This is going to be suggesting so bad. <laughs> <laughs> if you're if everybody's happy with iPad OS on the iPad Pro, I'm not suggesting anywhere that we yeah. would take that away you would still be able to use ipad go to OS. They could still make iPad OS gov <laughs> go to, to keep your ipad <laughs> if you want to keep ipad os exactly how it is you would be able to mm -hmm. all we've been suggesting is a little option in settings that says hey apple made this hardware and i would like to use another piece of software apple has made that is optimized for running on this chip i don't care if it's exclusive to the m1 even the 16 you say gig you need the newest ipad even Pro. the terabyte of storage yeah you can say it you need 16 gigs of ram because i saw people saying like ipads only have they start at 128 gig and mac os takes up space ipad os takes up space i'm like fine restrict it to the two terabyte option for all i care as long as there's some way to do it yeah i don't care what money we got to spend even if it's a five thousand dollar freaking iPad, Whoa, okay, that is no okay Drew, that's that's right. That's, I got that's abandoned too ships. Far. I, I, Sorry, Drew. <laughs> okay, All right. okay, three thousand dollars. Okay, now we can, yeah, okay, we can talk okay. a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Now we're talking. As long as there's some piece of Apple hardware. I was Apple right hardware. there. Hey, I was your family. Yeah, yeah, five thousand dollars. No, I'm actually no. That's where I gotta. I'm, I'm just gonna go okay, buy it. Too much. <laughs> I'm just saying, as long as there's a piece of Apple hardware that is capable of doing all the great things an iPad can and all the great things a Mac can. That is the ultimate Apple product, mm -hmm. and the only thing preventing that from happening is, but it's not a Mac, so it can't run macOS. It's like it's a software in the. I'm not suggesting Apple has to make any new hardware. I'm not suggesting they have to come out with some. You know, they have to talk to some supply chain and figure out how to put a touchscreen on a MacBook. I'm not saying you need to hire ten times as many software engineers to completely revamp iPadOS and change the App Store and the third-party Mac. All of you, everybody else's solutions cost way more time, way more money. Yeah. If and you we have dual the solution boot, sitting in front of if us. If you dual boot, dual boot into macOS on on the M1 iPad, it your your touchscreen is no longer a touchscreen. It's just yeah. a screen. Yeah. It's like a sidecar. It's just Apple's sidecar. Not above that. Yeah. It's sidecar doesn't sidecar. let you use the touchscreen. It's already there. It's all this it is just yeah. sidecar. But you know what's great about sidecar is you can use the pencil. So if Boom. you're using macOS and then a drawing application comes up. Oh. Now you can use the stylus. Oh, and it's beautiful. 120 hertz, low latency. But for everything else, just be like, okay, when you're in macOS mode, you can't use the touchscreen. There you like, go. It's, it makes so much sense. Don't even install it by default. Like, make us re-download it, Apple. That's fine. I'll, I'll take the time. I'll wait a few hours to go into settings and be like, opt for, put it in general, about version iPad OS, and then a little thing at the top that says install Mac OS Big Sur. Alec, and I got to tap it. How much you want? I it's want about download. right, about right. There, you could partition the SSDs. Yeah, That's right. You could do whatever you got to do. Um, and a lot of people say, well, this would uh, cannibalize MacBook sales. And I don't think it would because iPads can upsell people way more than totally. Macs. iPads um, have the better camera. iPads have the better fluidity of it. iPads have a stylus. iPads Face are ID. touch. Face ID, a different biometrics. And they're way more expensive. And they're more expensive. <laughs> you have to spend 
If you wanted an equivalent, okay, so let's say what's the cheapest like, iPads MacBook? have the mini LED display now? I mean, so right. So the cheapest MacBook Air is $1000 without education discount, 1000 bucks, right? And that's 256 gigs with a 13-inch display. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you just wanted an iPad equivalent of that, you would have to spend over $1500 because you have to get the 12.9-inch model, which is 1100 and then you have to get 256 gigs which is 1200 and that's before the magic keyboard case is equipped and it doesn't account for cellular which costs more there's so many things at checkout apple could be like oh well if you wanted just a 13 inch 256 gig laptop that's an ipad pro that's going to be 1500 dollars or more yeah and well, okay, well, what if I don't care about Face ID or 120 hertz or mini LED and I just want a laptop? Okay, MacBook Air, 1000 bucks, save you money. MacBook Air becomes the cheaper alternative. iPad, also way lighter. The iPad Pro with the keyboard case, so heavy. It's very thick. Very different product. Um, if Apple's comfortable having M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, I see no reason that you couldn't have a $1,500 to $2,000 iPad alternative that boots up into mac os mode that that is not going to cannibalize the one thousand dollar macbook air yeah they're just they're way different from each other mm, they absolutely. prioritize totally different things a base model so, of either or has its root it has its root features the same and mm -hmm. it, they're two different products when you start to right up up spec everything crossing it over it, it's a whole different audience at that point i'm not going to get this this perfect ipad pro you're talking about that dual boots and everything that's not going to go to my you know 10 year old nephew that i'm going to use that somebody who mm -hmm. who has yeah. a purpose you have to know what you're doing to get to that point that's meant for you then if you know what you have to do for it if you want to watch youtube on it you know that's not for you then so yeah. it's it's yeah it's a whole different audience it's a whole different customer base as a whole well drew gentlemen i'm sold i don't have to tell you i yeah. i want this non-existent thing right now that's that's it that's what i want <laughs> i'm for, sold it's driven me mad for 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 a guy who used windows dual boot for a long time when i had a day job and I'd use my MacBook Pro and then Windows Dual Boot. It's not the most convenient thing to get into, right? Like you have to close all of your apps on Mac OS. You have to shut it all the way down. It takes, you know, on the on the old Mac that I was running, it takes about, you know, a minute to go from Mac OS up and running to Windows up and running. And I'd imagine mm -hmm. there's gonna be a similar amount of, you know, maybe 30 seconds or whatever of time to shut down the iPad OS and boot into Mac OS. And that that is gonna keep a lot of people out of it. Just like, heck, don't even come pre-installed. Just have it be like a a, a, a yeah, dual boot, what I was whatever, like a dual boot in installer. What do they call it? Bootcamp, bootcamp assistant on the Mac. And just like in iPad yeah. OS, you can download some really obscure Apple app at the App Store. That's a you know dual boot assist or whatever, and install Mac OS, and you know let it think for a long time, and then you know have to do maybe some crazy even button clicks on the on the you know the whatever press and hold the volume up button or whatever to you know get it into that <laughs> mode i wouldn't mind doing that yeah. but i would probably command r i would probably leave it in the mac os mode yeah. because i yeah i think i, would I don't i don't really see reason to go back to ipad os uh outside of like drawing stuff like the drawing experience and the experience is fluid on ipad I, it's not as fluid on mac um i think even if they had sidecar note implementation it wouldn't quite be as as beautiful but other than that, like Mac OS for the win on the iPad for sure, because then that's one step closer. Because all I've ever wanted is just a really beautiful, great desktop monitor with one cable that runs into a 16 inch iPad with four Thunderbolt ports on a Magic Keyboard. That's all I want out of Apple. And I'd be so happy, but they're not going to do that because I can keep buying 16 inch MacBook Pros and iPad Pros because <laughs> reasons. <laughs> Reasons. I don't. I know that we're techies and we're the type to buy both, but I just don't think that's most. I don't yeah. think the majority of consumers are buying. I think they're buying one or the other, mm. and they can't make up their mind. And they see all this great iPad hardware, and they're like, "Wow, that's really cool!" But then it doesn't do this one Mac OS feature, this one Safari extension mm. I use for class. My wife is a best example of that. When she yep. had her uh, her Windows, she had an iPad. Mm. When she went to mm -hmm. the twenty fourteen 
MacBook Pro, she stopped using iPad mm. because now that was her dedicated one. So even though she has her, her phone, her iPhone, stuff like that, that's a best example right there uh, that I, I saw in lifetime happen where she went from iPad and it was her dedicated consumer thing to MacBook was doing that. And uh, I agree. I think it's it's one or the other for most people anyway. And uh, this whole, I think, and I bet Apple would make more money. People yeah. with the iPad. Be, I, I saw people try to hold on to this. Whole, like, this isn't the post PC, but but I think people are not. They're reimagining. Why am I why am I stuttering on that? They're reimagining. I can't talk that. I can't say that word. I don't they're think post PC. Thank you. The post PC phrase. And mm. uh, post PC was not a software thing, in my opinion. That's not how I saw it. P it wasn't like, oh, this is going to be the post-Mac world. This is the post-PC, post-personal computer. And to me, computer was hardware. And mm -hmm. using a, 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 an elegant slab of glass and, and, and aluminum, and this was, you can now do LTE on it, and now you can do 5G on it, and the whole, all the marketing stuff like that. This hardware mm -hmm. is... We're all in post PC. The, using your smartphone for mostly everything is post PC. iPads are post PC by design because it came out in 2009, 2010. It's not, it, this is, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're already in the post part. What we're talking about now is just getting the software there. And we're not saying there's anything innately wrong with Mac OS, but if you can migrate the parts that we really love over to this post PC device, now it's, it's it's simplifying the lineup for those who want to simplify it. There is always going to be a trade-off. For example, if we're using the, the iPad, now it's still one Thunderbolt port as opposed to four yep. or two or whatever amounts. Right. So there's still a trade-off so that you can still upsell the Mac hardware if you wanted mm -hmm. to. And if it's too much, you yeah. can still downsell for, hey, well, we have the, the regular iPad for schools and stuff like that. It, 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 it's not one or the other. We're it, we're all in the post PC now. It's just getting the software right. up to that level. This is a perfect way to do that in such a less cost efficient way for everybody, for the mm -hmm. Apple team and for us. Apple was more comfortable letting us dual boot Microsoft software yes. on the hardware than their own software. Yes. How backwards is that? Very. For decades, Apple let you run Windows on your Mac, but running Mac OS on your iPad? No. No. That's way too complicated. That's, that's too much. <laughs> no, no, no. But I think people, as I'm seeing on Twitter right now, still a lot of people don't get it. They're just like, it's not a Mac, though, so it can't do that. It's like, it's, but it shouldn't do that just because we decided it's a Mac? Like, it would be a different discussion if there was no mouse support on yeah. the iPad. Because then I would be suggesting the iPad have Get new mouse. user input methods yeah. that it didn't currently have. Now it ha does have a mouse. It does have a keyboard. It has a display. It has identical hardware to the Mac, essentially. Mm -hmm. There's little details here and there. It's better. It has way better hardware than the Mac. And it has totally the capability to run Mac OS. It's not a question of can it. It's just a matter of Apple saying we don't think it should. And that's preventing it from being, despite Apple charging $2,400 for certain configurations, it can't do what a Mac can because reasons, because software. Because it not Mac. <laughs> Mac OS go on the Mac. Yeah. iPad OS go on the iPad. We can't change that. It's like it's the same hardware now. At least when it comes to the to the logic board, it's the same hardware now. So it's software. Yeah, so on, it's, the, on the yeah. silicon on the CPU and GPU level, it's the same. Yeah. Different and controllers. Display and, stuff, and everything but else like, is, for the most part right. it's there. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's it's frustrating to me that people think someone shouldn't have the option. Basically, that's what they're advocating, too. <laughs> Having an optional feature that some people would like to utilize, it's like, it'd be like saying, I don't like uh, dark mode, mm. so they should take away dark mode. Yeah. Because I can't see a reason to use dark mode, so let's not have that there. It's To me, it's the same equivalence of that. It's like, well, if you don't like dark mode, just go into settings and leave it on light mode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if someone out there prefers dark mode, let them use it. That That's the way I see it. If someone out there prefers Mac OS and they like the iPad hardware and they don't want to have to choose, do I have to put up with the crappy software or the crappy hardware? Why can't I just choose a new just option? do what Justin Long does and buy a PC. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have crappy software and hardware. You can have a perfect two-in-one that nobody wants. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> imperfect two and one. Yeah. I'm just it. It frustrates me knowing how amazing that would be because I I can imagine it in my head. Like I have this vision of just you know Command R when you boot up the iPad or something and just switch it over to Mac OS and I have all my same features and you have all your same applications and you can do everything you it's can, the same like, profile i mean effectively you're still logged uh, into your apple id it's the same profile yeah. right everything's there same password same email and everything and now you have face id on a mac which oh, has never been totally done, oh maybe that's the whole that they're like we physically cannot do face id on a mac ever so we're just not going <laughs> to do this we could do touch ID on a magic keyboard via Bluetooth, mm-hmm. but face ID too much. on the same device. Face face ID on much. Mac makes more sense because it's not a touch interface that it should be on there. Whereas like an you're, you're right, an iPhone because you're just looking at you're it. just looking at you don't face touch the iMac. F- face ID makes the most sense on a Mac because you don't touch it. Whereas like I right. like touch ID on phone because all I do is touch the darn thing. Right, you're touching the screen yeah. on an iMac. You know, the, that's the, that's very true. Yeah. Hey, huh. uh, I'm, I'm glad I contributed. <laughs> this is me. You con- did. <laughs> there you go. I didn't Look. think about that. It was like Face ID makes more sense on Macs than it does on This Acolyte. is why, because you don't, you, it's not a touch but it's interface. it's great on both. Yeah. Yeah. If, oh, it drives me mad that I know they're not going to do it. Yeah. Just because Apple's or, set it They're going to get up like, there and they're going to be like, weird. widgets can now be moved. Yay. We're all just, just going to be like. I am 90 percent convinced ProRes will still not work yeah. after dub dub i i will not be shocked when that's the case yeah, what if what if it's just a software or no update? pro apps it's it's not a it's not a mac o, or ipad OS. it's not a major up version update it's just an update hey here we go now it can that would be great but i don't think it's going to happen i don't think apple cares if i could right now i'd give you a hug because i know how much that hurts <laughs> 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 makes me so sad Oh, well. Yeah. Same thing, like, uh, trying to see someone say, like, iPad OS should just redesign external monitor support. And the work it would take to redesign split screen and aspect ratios for iPad OS so that it could scale to ultra wide or 16 by 9 monitors. That amount of work compared to just, well, just put Mac OS on there. Now it'll ex- Done. It'll do external monitors like Done. it always has. No, but that would be weird. I don't like that. I wouldn't use that, so no one should. Yes. <laughs> that's, Logic. That's the I, argument it is right now. Uh, Have we beaten this horse I can't yet? Stand it. Is it dead? I hope so. Okay. Good. Yeah. This horse better be tenderized. Mm. Now, now everyone knows Gosh. what I really want. <laughs> that's it. A tenderized horse. Okay. That's it. Yes. That's it. A tenderized Mac OS on an iPad. Yeah. Dual boot method. Yeah. Any closing thoughts, gents? Well, Marquez came on the show, still. so I can't say that anymore. Um, Air, pa- Air power is dead. Air power is <laughs> dead. That's still factually <laughs> correct. <laughs> still dead. <laughs> Every day. Hasn't come back yet. Well, yeah, is it? we appreciate you all for watching. We'll see you next week for the hype stream. Oh, boy. Where we'll talk about all the things that we're happy for Wee! Yay! <laughs> take care everyone have a Bye. great day Bye. Bye. Bye.